sir. Mr. Secretary, are you still a free trader? Well, I'm still a free trader, although I'll tell you, Chris, it is becoming, and there are fewer and fewer of us. It's a very unpopular position. In Michigan, you can find almost as many free traders as you can find chicken hawks. There aren't many. Uh, you know, the, the trouble is that most people blame free trade uh, and, and blame free trade for the, the failure of American middle class to expand, the decline of middle class wages, uh, the, you know, all of, the, all of the problems, the economic problems we have. And I expect that Pat Buchanan is going to be one of those. Well, well, here respond. he comes to prove your point. Pat Buchanan, respond. Look, Is free trade killing America? Well, let me, uh, Bob Reich and I debated NAFTA just before it passed back in 1994, and we were told wonderful things would happen. I will tell you what happened. Since then, we've run $500 billion worth of trade deficits with Mexico, $60 billion record trade deficit last year. Mexico exports to the United States half again as many automobiles as we export to the world. China is now growing at 12 percent. We have a $233 billion trade deficit with them. Fastest growth in the world. They've been growing at 10 percent. We grew in the first half of this year at 2 percent. We've lost 3 million manufacturing jobs since George Bush took office. One in every six. If that is a successful trade policy, Mr. Reich or Dr. Reich, give us the, the, the statistics on a failed policy. Well, uh, Pat, I love to debate you from the right. I've so rarely had the occasion to debate somebody You're not on the, on the right. right. <laughs> but let me, but let me, let me just yeah. tell you something. I, I mean, we assumed, and you, when you and I debated NAFTA, you said that all of those manufacturing jobs were going to go to Mexico. Actually, we were both wrong. They went to China. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, the American economy is much larger today than it otherwise would have been without free trade. The problem is that a lot of the benefits of free trade have not gone to the people who had used to be manufacturing workers. But those manufacturing workers might have lost their jobs anyway, Pat, because mm -hmm. if you look in a manufacturing plant today, the most modern, up-to-date plants, and you see how much automated equipment is in there, robots, numerically controlled machine tools, there are very few workers. The assembly line is a thing of the past in most manufacturing facilities. So, look, so even if we didn't trade, technology would be taking away most of those jobs anyway. But look, automation, there's no doubt about it, and technology do decrease the number of jobs. But building robots and things like that, they could be done by American workers. Look, let me ask you, Bob, look, take the automobiles. I think Japan and Korea export three and four times as many automobiles to us as we are there, or 16 to 20 times as many cars to us as we do to them. Why? Because there's an unfair trade situation going on. They impose VAT taxes on our cars coming in and they rebate them on their cars going out. It has the well, same at, impact at, uh, as a tariff. Let me ask They're Pat, you're talking, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who Pat, makes the better you talking, car right you now? Talking, Who Pat makes the better about, car? The Pat is talking the about, Pat is talking about taxes and about tariffs. Look at, I say let's level the playing field in terms of let's make sure that the, the tax rates don't bias against the United States. Let's make sure China revalues its currency so that they don't have a built-in bias against the United States. Bob but Rice. if you look at the, wait a minute, Pat, look at the Japanese cars made in the United States by American workers, and sure. you find a lot of Americans will vote for those Japanese cars made in the United States because a lot of Americans think that they are better quality. Yeah, and you know why? They're less expensive because they don't have costs of health care and pensions, and General Motors and Chrysler are dumping them. That's what happens when you kill American companies in the United States. You dump their workers off health care and pensions, so they go to the federal government and they go back to the Democratic Party. Look, China, oh, wait, wait. look, China, you say revalue their currency. Why should they? They're beating the daylights out of us. But wait a minute. Pat, Pat, do you think, I don't yeah, understand your argument. I need a quality check here. I'm sorry. I have to ask. The American consumers are pretty picky. They pick the car they want to buy. Of course, they look at price. But, Pat, are you saying that we're making a better car and yet people are buying Toyotas? No, they, well, they make an excellent Why do you think people are buying Toyotas? They, they make an excellent car. There's no doubt about it. In, in Korea, there's no question about it. They export them here. And look, they don't carry the burdens that an American car carries. American car, Chris, carries a burden of Social Security taxes federal taxes, it care, all these other taxes in its price, and the health care and benefits of but, American workers. But, you let this stuff come in, you will kill these companies, and those workers will go to Walmart, and they will not be paying those same taxes. Free but, trade Pat, you is... Are, a, wait a minute. Pat, you are talking, we're not talking about trade. You're talking about an unfair advantage because a lot of big American companies have uh, health care agreements with their and unions. And they have high but wages. But I, I would say, I don't know if you agree with me, Pat, I think we ought to decouple health care from employment. Sure, we ought to have, have a national affordable health care system, and we shouldn't, employers should not sure, be providing health care. Sure, yes, you should have a federal health. Look, uh, Mr. Secretary, let me ask you one question, the same question, Pat. What car do you drive? What do you own? 
I have a Mini Cooper. What and is that's that? That's a BMW, right? A Mini Cooper a is a, a little I've tiny car a... that only only I can fit in. I've got a no, Navigator. No, it's a BMW. It's a German car. What do you own, Pat? I own a no, Navigator. It's actually made, it's actually made in, in, in London, and parts, okay. of the, parts are made in the United States. I own a Navigator, okay. and I own a Cadillac. That's what I own. Two American-made cars. I went to buy a great big when TV set. When did you set. switch from that? When Ten did you years. switch from that old uh, sky blue band? Wait a minute. But look. Wait a minute. What is American? You know, Can I just <laughs> ask Pat a simple Ten question? Ten years ago, Chris. What's what? his definition? Pat, what is your definition of American-made? You have a lot of Toyotas mm -hmm. and a lot of Nissans made in the United States right. today. You got a lot of American cars that have foreign parts. Well, What's well, made in you, America? How do you defend free trade when it killed our TV industry, took away half of our auto industry, took away half of our airline industries, and Boeing's planes are now? made the best parts of them in Japan. Is that good for America? Well, I want you to define what an American product is, Pat. You said Boeing planes are now made in Japan. A lot right. of American cars uh, by Toyota are made here in the United States. Uh -huh. I don't even know what you are talking about in terms of what, what American about. competitiveness is. What is best for the big companies is not what is best for the country. The two well, I agree with you have on separated. That. The two have separated, and all these trade deals are enabling acts for companies to get rid of their American workers, go over to China, make their products cheap, move them back in here free, and pop at the difference. That's why the stock Wait a minute, Pat, I will agree with you on one are, thing, and that is that killed. big companies and the interests of Americans are different, but I also disagree with you on the notion that Americans are not getting good deals from around the well, world. Listen, you know, look, you go to Walmart, why, how do you suppose Walmart keeps prices so low? I'm not defending Walmart. I don't look, like Walmart, I'll but why is Walmart able to keep prices so low? Because Walmart gets a lot of stuff from overseas, right, or okay. Walmart suppliers right, get a lot why. of stuff from overseas. I'll tell you why, because China has a devalued, a low-valued currency. But let me tell you this. Why is the American dollar sinking like a stone? Because we got an $850 billion merchandise trade deficit year in, year out, year in, year out. No country has ever survived that for a long period of time. You wait as this you think dollar our, goes wait down, minute, you think our, those prices at Walmart are going up, and you know it. Pat, you think our living standard would be higher if we stopped trading and we put a wall around the United States and I, said we won't trade with anybody? Look, How, I, what, what kind of economic illogic I'm are you basing you that on? You can do this stuff for a couple of, of decades, but you, that Chinese goods, when, that, when you t revalue the Chinese currency, which way do you think the price of those goods is going, Bob? You know it. It's going up in Walmart. It's going up for all of those things. We're destroying our currency okay. instead of putting tariffs on things. But, Pat, your, your arguments are going across. I have to, to jump in here, Pat. What about that? What about the argument that even though the price of oil is going up and our dependence on oil from the Middle East and elsewhere has driven up the price of oil uh, and a part of the amount of money we have to spend on it, that we're getting such a break on on goods from the Far East that it's offsetting that in our in our market well, Chris, there's no doubt about it. When you start with the, the initial benefits of free trade come immediately in the first couple of decades. You get rid of your American, your factories, your jobs, your technology, ship them all over. They make this stuff much more cheaply. It comes in here. We buy it cheaply. You keep doing it and doing it and doing it. We've run five trillion in trade deficits, Chris, in the last 15 years cumulative. The dollar is sinking. You can do this for a while, but after a while, those folks, you know what they're going to okay. say? But Pat, we Pat, don't want Pat, any Pat, more Pat, dollars. Wait a minute. Okay, guys. Pat, the dollar you is sinking because America. Americans and particularly wealthy Americans are living beyond our means because we have a federal deficit, because corporations are deep in debt, because we live in debt, we have a credit card society, and any IOU, and that's what the dollar you know is, is, that's laden I with that Pat, much debt is going to sink. My judgment here is that Pat Buchanan is absolutely sure of himself, and Robert Reich is using intellectual arguments, but he is not so sure of himself on this issue anymore. I am absolutely sure of myself. Was. Absolutely sure of myself. I'll okay. tell you, what's, what, I, what I am also sure of, though, uh, mm -hmm. is that most Americans are shifting toward the Pat Buchanan view of trade, but and I think that's they, dangerous, it's frankly. It's not my eloquence. It is because they see the consequences in town after town after town and community. They see the jobs gone. They read the papers. It wasn't because I was up here me and Ross Perot making the case, like the Wall Street Journal said, they have seen the consequences, Bob, and they don't no, like I'll it. No, I'll tell you, Pat, I, I'll tell you, I, here's like the reason. Okay, party. we have to go. Gentlemen, yeah. gentlemen, this is the debate. I was We're just about to give you the reason. This is very important. Night. Okay, quick, Bob. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I the think reason. that Americans are insecure, and a lot of that insecurity <laughs> comes right. from the fact that it's not just it, it's not just globalization. It's also technology. It's the way corporations mm -hmm. are right. treating a lot of workers. Mm -hmm. Instead of treating them as assets, they're treating mm -hmm. them as as disposable units. That yeah. is not trade. Sure. That is not the problem of trade. That's the problem of, of how right. Wall Street and is now operating. And their government doesn't care about them. This is it the best debate we've had so far. But it has to end.